I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes and um, so we get everybody in the room. Say hello if you're there. Good morning. Hi, Richard. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Emma. Oh, yep. Yeah. Hi, Gina, Kim. Boo. Oh, God, you're all coming in so fast now. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Okay, before we get started, just a few house rules. I know a lot of you have been joining us on these webinars, um, but if you do have any questions, if you pop it in the message box. If you put a question mark, it goes into a blue box so we can go back and answer all the questions, just because we've got so much to go through today. Um, if we keep going over the questions at that point, we might not make it, we'll be in, on here all day. So um, if you just pop it in the question box, but definitely interact let me know you're there let me know you can hear me and um yeah really looking forward to today so today we are looking at the hair and scalp health a lot of you already know me um but we have got some people on today that have only um that i haven't met before but i've been working now with passion for hair for about nine ten years and i've always been interested in the hair and scalp health but it wasn't really prevalent to me until I was introduced to um, Passion for Hair. Um, and the reason being is that Passion for Hair have such amazing quality products, as a lot of you know. And I wanted to know more about cosmetics and why these were different and why they treated certain hair and scalp health. And then also it just really aligned with me at that time because I'm sure you can all relate that I was noticing in the salon as I'm working behind the chair that many clients were coming in with scalp issues, hair loss issues, and, you know, we work on creating the best haircuts, giving them a great colour. But if we can really help with their hair concerns as well, then we're going to be achieving their goals even more. Um, so that's when we, um, with Debbie, we looked at introducing the Hair and Scalp Practitioner Programme. And what we're going to go on today, we're looking at the science and the hair and scalp health. Um, but it definitely does dig in a lot more deeper. But it's almost like an introduction to that. So I hope you enjoy and you've got your, your, note, um, your notepad and your pen because we're going to be going over quite a lot of stuff today. And actually, before I get started, one thing I do want to say is some of this you already know. And um, Brittany posted in the P4H site the other day saying when we do education, it isn't always about what we already know, but are we implementing this? So hopefully by the end of today, you're going to think about going back to the salon soon, hopefully and implementing everything that we go over today. Um, and it's a great time now because we don't normally have this time to educate like this and to make changes that we want to make when we go back to the salon. Everything's changing around us right now. It's a great time to really implement structures and strategies that we want in the salon. Um, there's a few people saying that they can't hear Deck. Um, can you just find out? Can everyone else hear me? Just put a Y, yeah. Well, Declan's on, Deck, Techie Deck. Um, he's here to help with any technical issues. Okay, so um, I've got a presentation for you all today. Um, and what we're hoping, the objective is by the end of today's webinar, we're gonna understand a little bit more about the hair and scalp science. And it's nothing different compared to what we did originally in our MVQ. But if you're anything like me, when I was doing my MVQ, um, oh, okay, somebody still can't hear. Is there anyone to help? Um, okay, someone's gonna uh, help out. Is Debbie or Decker on there? Click the bottom right hand of screen. I am the worst at technology, I'm just saying that. I, I'll probably end up breaking the whole presentation but Dex really good he should be able to help with that um so hair and scalp science what we're going to be going over is everything that we've done in our mvq but when i was doing my mvq i just wanted to get qualified and everything was really new to me learning how to cut hair learning how to color hair and that's what i wanted to master all the theory stuff it i just done the bare minimum to get my qualification um so i i've forgotten half of it by the time i qualified can anyone um, relate to that? So we're gonna go back over and look at the hair and scalp science. 
Um, and we're going to go over some of the common hair and scalp concerns, and I'm sure you've all come across it in the salon as well. Um, in salon solution and treatments, what we can do in the salon, what products are available to us to help any um, solutions to the problems our clients are having. Key product knowledge, so the key products that I would recommend and that we know work because we've had many success stories. I'm not going to be going over ingredient by ingredient. That would just be um, the not best use of our time. But I'm going to let you know where all this information is available. Um, and confident consultations. And on this topic, this is really important because a lot of our clients may be feeling embarrassed. Um, it, you know, it might be a touchy issue for them. So we need to approach it in a, a confident and um, in, a, in an empathic way as well. And then also home care solutions, because it isn't, it's 60% what we do in the salon and it's 40% what our client does at home. Um, and that's really, really relevant. Like when we think about it in other industries, like um, let's just say you go for a facial with a beautician and they use these lovely products, they exfoliate your skin, it feels amazing. And then I go home and then I, I wash my face in something that I brought on offer out of Tesco's. What was the point of me doing all that work on my skin with the beautician that day? It's, it's just gonna undo everything. So it's 60% what we do in the salon and 40% to make sure our clients are, are using these regimes at home to achieve the end goal. Okay. I know we've got some of you on here as well that have already done the hair and scalp practitioner course as well. Um, but it's really good to recap back over it and to share with your team, um, team friends as well. So we say there's four areas to become a successful stylist. So it's your profound knowledge, which we're all working on today, your skill, your emotional intelligence. Again, really important when it comes to this topic because, again, clients may be embarrassed. And making sure we've got solutions and confident solutions as well. So these four things should achieve all your goals and become you help you to become a more successful stylist. And right now we have an opportunity to really develop ourselves in our profession. With everything going on, a lot of um, um, of our clients, of we, we've, our reputation has changed. We are valued a lot more as hairstylists. We, people realize how much they need us. And so we should really develop ourselves and take advantage of this and become a lot more professional in the way that we work. Um, you know, we wanna be seen as the client's expert um, so we need to work in a more professional way and even in a clinical environment, um, which is really important now, people are looking at the hygiene, people are looking at how safe they feel in the salon. Um, so it's our duty to make sure we do that. We've still got people, um, hello, hi everyone who's still coming on. Um, right, okay, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so some of you who may have been on Debbie's webinar a few weeks ago now, um, and she went over the research from Mintel, who are a massive research company, and they make predictions for um, for everything, really. Um, do any of you remember Debbie going over this? And it really got me thinking about our industry and what an opportunity we have at the moment. So Mintel predict that in the immediate future, hair and scalp health is going to be a crucial focus and the quality of our hair will be put under microscope with consumers wanting to strengthen the hair with hair care becoming the new skincare. So um, what does this mean for us? Like, I don't know about you, but all over social, me um, social media, I see people showing different skincare regimes. They've got amazing videos, great content. It makes you wanna really look after your skin. Before skincare, it was makeup. Um, everyone was a makeup artist. Everyone was um, doing different makeup trends, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, Maria, you're right. It's great news for us. But also it isn't just for us because I see people on social media who are not qualified skincare specialists. You know, you've got Shelly on Facebook from up the road who's selling all these products. And if I was that her, the client's beautician and they were buying products from Shelly up the road, I think I would be offended. So we really need to think about what we do with this information and how we're gonna bring it to our clients in the best way. 
Um, so it is great news for us as long as we take the information and implement everything in the correct way. So we are the client's expert and they're not going to Shelly up the road to buy it off Facebook because they are going to be looking at the way they present things. And I've seen it on social media already. People showing you how you should wash your hair, um, how you should uh, look after your scalp. I'm seeing it already. So we need to make sure we've got the right structure and strategy to go forward with it. Okay, so the next one, consumers are adopting their routine and regiments to find the best practice aligning healthy and sustainable lifestyle decisions. Everything is sustainable. And as you all know, with um, Euphora, Malibu C, Census, it's all sustainable companies that we choose to work with. Um, and our consumers, our clients, our guests are going to be a lot more aware of this. Okay, let me go on to the next slide. So planning ahead. So again from Mintel, oh it's 11.11, sorry guys. So planning ahead, nature, science and information, let me just move this over, and in, instinct have to support each other and the future innovation will depend on this. Consumers are going to better connect with hair solutions that meet their specific needs, whether functional or physical, and the professional market can build on its expert standing to enhance the experience. Um, so the experience that we give our clients in the salon using eight step um, and taking that to social media, how are you going to make your content more relevant? Okay, and then the next slide again from Mintel. Consumers, client, guests will demand expertise. Information is readily available. Consumers are going to be more savvy. So when your client is coming to you in the salon, they've probably already done their research. They may be even choosing to come to you because the products that you stock in the salon. Um, so we need to make sure that our product knowledge is up to date and that we, we share this information with our clients. And you know the eight step. And if some of you aren't familiar with the eight step, we do have some webinars already on our YouTube channel that go through the eight step procedure uh, for clients. Okay, so a lot of you have seen this information before, but it's good to go over and really think how you're going to implement and what you're going to do with this information. Okay, so what does this mean for us? What do you guys think this means for us? Would you, if you want to answer in the box as well, what do you think this means for us with all this information? Maria says it's great news for us. More money. Yeah, thanks, Nikki. More opportunity. Sales. Brilliant. Yeah, so it's going to be opportunities of retail. It's going to give us deeper connection with clients, developing that level free relationship. Um, more influence, building trust if we have good knowledge. Absolutely. A client is three times more likely to become a loyal client, a fan when they buy retail from you. This is um, factual information. It allows us to become more professional in the salon as well. Again, creating that clinical environment, hygiene, hygienic environment, becoming more professional. We're already wearing visors, masks, everything we've like, we, we, we're sanitizing everything. Um, and I don't know about you, clients want this now. People are a lot more aware of it. Um, making sure you don't have big, long, fake nails on your hands. I've been wearing a lot in lockdown just to stick on ones. Um, but when we're in the salon, we need to be, think how doctors are, nurses are, dentists, opticians. Um, and this is our opportunity to be seen more like that. Um, we need to be delivering eight step consistently and marketing more relevant content online because these other, um, other companies like, you know, I know a lot of my friends work in these pyramid screens and it's great for them but I want my clients to be buying retail from me. So if you're not good at content online, it's time to get good. We need to get you out of your comfort zone. Um, and it will be uncomfortable to begin with if you're not comfortable with it, but eventually it'll become natural. You know, you might have somebody who is um, an excellent hairdresser that, you know, really skillful, very talented, um, but they don't work on social media or on online very well. And you might have somebody who isn't as talented as them, but because they've got a great social media and a great following, they become more successful. So it's something that we need to become more comfortable with. 
And a lot of you who know me, I, I didn't like it to begin with. I'm used to talking to people in front of them, um, but it's something that we have to train and improve um, to become successful with this. Okay. Right, so we're gonna get into the science of the hair and the scalp. So I said a lot of you would have seen this already. Have any of you seen this? Can you remember seeing this diagram before? So this is a cross section of the intergumentary system, which is um, our skin. Um, a lot of you may be really familiar with it. You work for it already. Um, we do have, those of you that have been on the hair and scalp practitioner course, we have folders and we have it that to share with clients when we're talking to them, you can see that there. Um, I know we can't use magazines or anything in the salon at the moment, but images like this could be what you're sharing um, online when you're educating your clients because it looks really scientific and it, uh, it makes us look more professional as well. So um, this is a cross section of the skin. The skin's made up of three different layers. I'm going to be jogging some of your memories now. So we've got the epidermis, which is the most outer layer of the skin. Then we have the dermis which is the middle layer, and then the hypodermis, which is where all the fatty connective tissue and the blood vessels, like the arteries and the veins, run through. Um, the epidermis is made up of five layers. And, um, you know, if somebody's got excessive dry scalp, then the issue is probably within the epidermis or it's an, a reaction to something else that's happening in the body. Um, then we have the sebaceous gland and the sweat gland. Um, so the sebaceous gland is what produces sebum. So if your client is getting really greasy hair, for some reason, the sebaceous gland is, um, is creating more sebum. And the sweat gland is what controls our body temperature um, because it's what produces sweat. And then we've got the hair shaft. Um, so it's made up. So I want you to all have a feel, find one strand on your hair. If you can find one, try not to pull it out. And if you run your fingers down, it feels quite smooth. And if you run it up in the other direction, is anyone doing this with me? Can you hear that squeaking? Does it feel a little bit more rough? Yeah. Okay, that's the cuticle that we can feel. Um, so the most outer layer, and then we have the cortex, which is where any chemical um, processes take place. Um, and the cortex is made up of micro, uh, fi um, microfibrils, macrofibers. Um, and then we have the medulla, which is the most central part of the hair strand. Not every single hair on your head will have a medulla. And when I first studied um, hairdressing, I was told that the medulla had no purpose. Um, but when I researched and looked into this uh, more recently, um, they say like the medulla is the secretion part of the hair. Um, and this is why you can do drug tests on your hair. You can look for any intolerances, um, any deficiencies they can tell from your hair strands. So um, it's really amazing. And actually when they are drug testing, it lasts longer in your hair than what it would in your blood. And that's why a lot of police and people invest that way um okay and then we've got the inner hair shaft and the hair root and the hair bulb and the hair papilla so this is when it's all attached in the hair bulb and it's being fed all the nutrients and the nourishment we need to get from the blood flow etc so um it's just good to recap um because sometimes if you want to get more techie with your clients for ones and like clients are going to be researching things like this it's good to share this information with them. Like if your hair's becoming a little bit more greasy, it's because your sebaceous gland is producing more sebum. But we've got some products that we can work with today and some that I can recommend for you to help um, balance and control this at home. Um, yeah, so, oh, Daniel said, new research shows that the medulla is the con conduit, I think, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, for medication and hormones traveling through the hair, exactly that. Um, and Claire said she's had her hair tested last week and told me I'm intolerant to dairy products and need to up my vitamin K. Oh, oh, it's Debbie, sorry, Debbie there. Um, I thought it was Daniel being an honorable hairdresser again. <laughs> but yeah, no, brilliant, Claire. I was waiting to get your results um, because we were talking about you were going to do that. And Debbie's had that done as well. 
They've actually got some good um, deals on Groupon if you do want to have your own hair um, tested, just so because if you are going to be recommending this for your clients um, to go and do, it's good so you know what to experience as well. Um, and that's something that I do recommend alongside with my products, etc., with my clients. Um, and Erin um, says, isn't that the, why Britney Spears shaved her hair off? Um, well, apparently, rumour has it, that is why she shaved her hair off when she had that uh, meltdown, breakdown. She shaved all her hair off. But apparently, rumour had it that it was because she was going to have her children take off, taken off of her and they were going to drug test her. And so she shaved all her hair off. Don't know how true it is, but that was the rumour at that time. So she was quite clever, if it is true. Um, oh, and someone else said, that's what I got told by someone in the know. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. How do I scroll down to get on to the next slide? Let me. Oh, here we go. So this is the next slide. Are some of you familiar with this? Other known as ACT. Um, I'm going to ask you all, how many hairs do you think one scalp has? on average. Let me see if anyone knows. Yep, Lara, Abby, 100,000 hairs on our head. 100,000 hairs on our head, on average. Does anyone know on average how many hairs we lose a day? Yep, Abby, 100 hairs. On average, we lose 100 hairs a day. Um, but it doesn't always come straight out. It does get caught up in the rest of our hair. And it doesn't just fall out from one section. Like if I just had 100 hairs here fall out, I'd be quite concerned and I'd have a bald patch here. Um, over 70 to 80% of our hair is actively in the anagen phase. So, um, 70,000 to 80,000 of our strands of hair is still going to be on the head. So we lose up to 100 a day. Um, but if you're washing your hair every day, you probably wouldn't notice it so much. It's something really important to keep in mind. If you have a client who's washing their hair once a week, it's going to be like 700 hairs coming out of their hair. Um, so when you're, if a client is having or experiencing some sort of hair loss, important questions to ask is, um, how often do they wash their hair, etc. Um, so if there is excessive hair loss, that's when we need to look at it a bit more deeper and find out what's going on. But yeah, so it's the act. We've got anagen, catagen, and telogen. And then the fourth one is known as anagen, restart, or exogen. I'm just going to go on to the next slide. So hair growth. The anagen phase can last from two to seven years. 70 to 80% of our hair is in this phase. And um, I always thought like some clients would say, oh, my, my hair only grows to this length and then that's it, it just doesn't grow anymore. And I was thinking, well, you can't be having your hair cut regularly. It must just be breaking off because hair does grow longer than that. But if you've got a client whose anagen phase is only two years, then it's actively growing for two years and then it will go into the catagen phase. So let's say a hair grows a centimeter a month. So you've got 24 months of growth. Um, then it will go into catagen intelligent and it will be one of the hairs that she loses. So it is scientific really that if a hair does only grow to that length, it's because of their anagen phase. Um, but some clients, and uh, it's actually more like in genetics and hereditary, um, it, that in Asian hair, their um, anagen phase can last a lot longer. So it ha the hair actively grows up to seven years before it goes into the catagen or telogen phase. Um, so the catagen phase is like the regression transition phase. It can last from two to four weeks. Um, and it's only 5% of your hair that is in that phase currently. Um, and then the hair slowly detaches from the dermal papilla. So it disconnects. And then it goes into the telogen phase. So it's like the resting, shedding phase. Um, and this can last up to three to five months. Um, 
and the hair loss will really it doesn't just completely fall out sometimes it's more when it's epilated so when you're brushing your hair when you're washing your hair it's going to come out um, and it's about 10 to 15 percent of the hair um, that's in this phase and the bowl completely shrivels and it is not getting any nutrients not getting any nourishment and then in that follicle uh, it's anagenic restart so a new hair will be coming through and sometimes when you look at hair under a microscope you can almost see you can see two hairs coming out of the follicle um, so it's really good when you look at the hair under the microscope And um, one thing to think about here as well, if a client is having hair loss, um, sometimes I ask them, um, and this is more in the practitioner uh, environment, but um, I ask them to collect their hair so we can analyze it as well, like daily. This is how much I lost on this day. This is how much I lost on that day. And we can see if it looks more like club hair, like has it still got the bulb attached almost? You know when you, you accidentally pull out your hair or an eyelash comes out and you see a little ball on the end of it? Um, when it doesn't have that, it means it was still in the anagen phase because it's just come out from that. Yeah, Ju says she's seen that too. Um, so when it does have that, it means that it had detached and it's got um, and it's just come out from the head and it was in the telogen phase. Um, so that's one way to assess because if they're losing a lot of hair in anagen phase, it could be due to traction alopecia or there is some sort of underlying condition going on, which is making the hair loose in the anagen phase. Um, so Andrea says, ACT is one of the things that uh, that did get go into the brain and stuck there till she was 16. Brilliant. Yeah, I think because they the way they print like they, the way they said it's ACT, it was easy to remember. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, so now we're going to look at a different hair type. So um, there's three different hair types. So all of us on here today will fall into one of these categories. Um, and depending on the hair type depends on the nature of the hair and how it behaves. So we've got textured hair or Afro-Caribbean hair, Asian hair or Caucasian hair. Okay. So I've done a little table here for you guys, but textured hair is a kidney shaped or oval shape. The actual hair strand is either kidney or oval. Um, it has a relatively smaller diameter and it grows um, at a slow rate, the slowest rate of the three at 0.9 centimetres per month. And it gives more twist per unit um, in length. Um, it has medi medium density and it grows parallel to the skin surface. Um, so as it grows out, it pushes back upon itself, which creates the, the, the curl, the twist. There's so many different types of curl as well. Um, and it contains predominantly or entirely um, EU melanin, um, which gives it the colour. And on average, because we said earlier, on average, we have about 1000 hairs on our heads, but it goes from 50 to 150. Um, so with textured hair, uh, on average, it's 50 to 100,000 hairs on the head. Um, and also um, textured hair is a, a bit more sensitive as well. We need to look after it a lot more. We need to put a lot more moisture in it and be very selective when we're working with certain products. Um, sometimes we need to really, we're gonna go more into this later, but we treat the scalp different to how we treat the hair. I've got clients who've got really curly hair um, and they have hair loss or they've got a scalp concern. And one thing that I'm seeing a lot of is people are treating the scalp and the hair with the same product. Whereas if you had a broken arm and a broken and a, a graze on your knee with stitches, the doctor wouldn't treat it both the same. They treat it differently, uh, which makes me um, really think about when doctors are prescribing medicated shampoos to our clients that they're not explaining that to them either. That this is only for your scalp. Don't use it on your head. It's going to really dry it out. Uh, but we're going to go into that a little bit um, a little bit later on. Okay, so Asian hair is more of a round diameter. Um, it's the thickest diameter with a, a larger medulla as well. It's the least dense of all the hair types. It's the quickest growing rate at 1.3 centimetres per month. Um, it grows nearly uh, perpendicular to the skin surface where it comes out. Um, and it contains predominantly um, EU melanin and trichosiderin and theomelanin. So it's a mixture of all. When you look at... Um, uh, 
hair under this uh, a microscope, you'll see there is, it isn't all just dark. There's lots of different colors there. Um, and that is 80 to 140,000 hairs on the head. Um, and then we have Caucasian hair, which can be a mixture of both round and oval diameter. Um, and it's a variable in diameter size, variable colors and variable amounts of EU melanin if I can't get my words on now, EU melanin, trichosiderin, and pheomelanin. It grows at an intermediate rate up to 1.2 centimetres per month. It grows at an angle to the skin surface um, and most dense of all the hair types. And depending on the colour of the hair uh, will depend on um, the thickness. And I think this is really correct, like when I think of my clients that I have, like blonde hair can be up to 146,000 hairs on the head. This textbook was very specific with the numbers, um, which when I thought about a lot of my blonde clients, they have finer hair, but a lot more of it. Um, black hair was up to 110,000 um, and brown hair was 100,000 and red hair, 86,000. Um, and 86,000 on red hair, like I find a lot of my clients with red hair have really thick hair strands, but there's less of it. Um, I don't know if any of you can um, um, can relate to that when you're working with your clients and the different hair colours. Um, so it's good to share this information with your clients. Okay, so in Salon Solutions what can we do in the salon? Okay, so creating a specific scalp and hair care menu to help guide you with consultation. At Passion for Hair, we have lots of consultation um, tools. We've got the chemical consultation, the technical data um, consultation. What I like to use is my Euphora consultation. In here, it asks your hair concerns over here and our clients can tick what their hair concerns are um, and when I am consulting with my clients with the hair and scalp practitioner we have a se separate consultation and all of these tools are given to you on this course but um, and you have to work in a specific way as a hair and scalp practitioner but as a stylist we still need to address these issues um, so it says here your hair concerns lack body volume split ends, hair loss, oily scalp, um, sensitive skin or scalp, scalp skin or hair condition, badly damaged, frizzy, grey hair, dry hair, and they can tick their hair, hair concerns because sometimes they won't want to say it out loud. They're a bit embarrassed. So I always say to my clients, I'm going to give you our consultation card to fill out. And we can, uh, we like to know about any hair concerns or any scalp concerns, so we can give you our professional recommendation today, so we can achieve the hair, your hair goals and your your scalp goals. Um, and then it just goes through the history of their hair cut and cut and style, etc. Um, how often do you shampoo your hair? What hair care products are you currently using at home? Um, what are your styling challenges? How much time do you dedicate? styling your hair each day and then it has a list of all the euphora products in there so it's really good because a client might not want to say it out loud but they can tick it on this sheet and then it's really important that we address it um in in a discreet way as well um and what i love about the euphora consultation cards is that it almost gives them like a little journal at the back um, and that's what we want to be now. We don't want to just be a hairstylist. We want to be our client's mentor. We want to be their port of call with anything to do with their hair and scalp. So in here, you can tell them with their hair regimen in the morning and at night time what they need to do. You can get these from Passion for Hair. Um, I don't know, um, Rebecca's asking. You can get these from Passion for Hair and they do go in hand with the Euphora products, which I'm going to talk about why Euphora in a minute. Um, any special instructions, um, you know, it's really important in the morning. Every client needs to dry style their hair in the morning unless they're washing it. Because when we wake up in the morning, our hair is all over the place and the cuticle has opened in areas, which means it can become more broken very quickly. 
um, and more it can it can have more damage to it. So it's important to use your hair dryer. I'll put mine here to smooth the cuticle every morning because that is going to protect your hair. Obviously, if you're going straight onto this, it's going to damage your hair. Holding it a distance just to smooth the cuticle and give it shine. Especially if you're going to go in with any hot tools as well, because if you go straight in on hair where the cuticles open, it's going to damage the hair a lot more. So using the hair dry to smooth the cuticle is going to promote shine, create more freshness to the hair and protection as well. Um, so they, they should be using the, the hair dryer every day. So that should be put on their hair regimen. It's also got any special instructions, um, additional tips and what they should be doing weekly. Um, you know, if a client has a hair or scalp concern, we want to be seeing them very regularly between four to six, eight weeks. Some clients, depending if it's a hair and scalp practitioner uh, appointment, weekly we want to be seeing them. Um, and how they treat their hair on different weeks could be different. Because if I've got some of a scalp concern for that first week, I want them shampooing their hair every single day. It's like taking your medicine from the doctor. You need to take it every single day. If you're only shampooing your hair once a week, you're not getting that ingredients or that product onto the scalp. Um, so these are brilliant. And it kind of leads us in a way because it can be a little bit embarrassing. I know I had a really embarrassing moment when I thought I, I was drying my client's hair and I, I was looking at his hair scalp and I could see it was really thinning. And I couldn't hear him properly because I had the hairdryer on. And I thought he said, oh, yeah, my hair's feeling really fine. Um, and I was like, yeah, it is really getting thin, isn't it? But he didn't say that. He said, uh, I, I can't remember what he said, but he didn't say that. And then I, it was just a really embarrassing situation because um, you can never hear anything when you're, shampoo, uh, when you're blow drying someone's hair. But um, using something like this, just it, it prepares us a lot more. Um, and then we can deliver the correct results and it makes sure we, just, we don't miss anything out as well. Um, okay, so um, creating a relaxing um, spa experience. Euphora Mood really helps with this. I don't know if you can see, I've got my Euphora Mood um, stuff up here. I have it on at home all the time. Having this as well. Some of you have got these in your salons and at your houses to put essential oils in and um, to really give a lovely experience in the salon. Um, you know, the essential oils really work with the mind and how um, our mood as well. We've got candles um, and also creating a clinical environment, you know, making sure we're aware, have you got certain jewelry on? And I know we're hairdressers, we love it, but if you wanna earn more money and become more professional and be seen like a doctor, then it, we need to make these changes. Um, but you know, you can still be, be glam at the same time, but you know, making sure you've got certain uniform or aprons that you're wearing. Um, you know, I'm loving what I'm seeing everyone doing with all their tools, you know, making sure all your brushes are sanitized and clean and wrapping them in the clean film before every client. And with hair and scalp concerns, I would have different tools as well. Um, so it's, you know, creating a clinical and relaxing spa experience. You know, it's like a an, mask, visors, definitely. Um, using the essential oils or sprays to spray on the towels as well, whether you want energizing, in love, relax, whatever you want to do with the different mood collection. Um, and the next one says for, for in salon solutions, no matter what hair problem it is, crystal gel first, Malibu C. Malibu C really helps with um, cleansing the hair from uh, medication, minerals from water. We've got absolutely tons of information from Maria, Debbie online about Malibu C. Uh, we've got webinars all talking about it. Um, going in with the crystal gel first and removing any impurities that we get from water that we wash our hair in, calcium, um, copper, it all builds up on the hair. So if we're using lovely natural products to go in and treat the hair or scalp, it's going to have to use all of its energy to try and get through all these barriers that's caught, uh, been left barriers on the hair before it even does what it's been made to do. Um, so every, every single person, crystal gel with any hair or scalp concern before we go in with our chosen regimens. 
I use this on all my clients now. Any new clients to remove anything from doing a color service because I can, I can guarantee my skill. I can guarantee my products. What I can't guarantee is whatever they've got on their hair at the moment. Okay, so crystal gel, always first port of call. Um, it allows us to, for the chosen product we require to go in and do what it's supposed to do. And then your chosen regimen. Um, why are you choosing these products for this client? We've got a few to choose from. Um, why this one for this particular client? We're going to go into this a little bit more um, later on. But we've got Euphora and we've got Malibu. And for the hair, I would say we have the census product as well. If you've got a client with a speci specific hair scalp concern, my first recommendation would be Malibu and Euphora used together. Um, and then when we want to, with the census, the way that they are formulated is really good for the hair shaft. But if somebody's got a certain condition, my first choice would be Euphora or Malibu. And we're going to go more into that in a minute. Educate your clients on tools and equipment and products. Some of you may, Mil uh, may know Milka. Um, she had a hairdryer she'd had for many years. And if you've got a hairdryer that's quite old, all the elements in it are not going to be functioning correctly. So it can actually be more damaging onto your hair. Um, so I ask my clients, you know, what, what hairdryer have you got? What brush have you got? Um, sometimes I've gone in salons and even their brushes, teeth are missing. Probably not so much now, but teeth are missing out their combs. Um, bristles were gone out the brushes. Um, it's important that we, we've got good tools because they could be the, the problem with the hair or the scalp. Um, and, you know, H.H. H. Simpson hair dryers and tools that we have, I then educate my client about the infrared technology um, and how much better because the certain plates on the tools um, are much healthier for the hair, etc. cetera. Um, and also it's something that we can do now because we can't physically do our client's hair in the salon but we do have the Salon Love app available. And I know we've got some people on here today that are not familiar with that, but all of Passion for Hair salons can retail and recommend products, tools to our clients right now and have it shipped, gift wrapped, lovely little message in there and sent straight to your clients because they're not spending money on having their hair done at the moment. They should be looking at their self and their hair health care. And we are, we should get out there now and share the information and find out, give them the solutions that they can do at home right now. Um, book in for regular cuts and treatments. Um, and that's what I put on my little cards as well. Like for this, we, I need to be seeing you every six weeks. I was having my hair cut every four weeks because my hair keeps it, its thickness through the ends. And I, I don't, you can't even really call it a cut. It's almost like a little dust along the bus, bottom to keep the, the density and the strength through the ends of my hair. Um, and so when you see stylists that aren't having their hair cut regularly and it's all wispy through the ends, how, how we recommend to our clients that they need to be coming in every six weeks to keep that strength. Um, there's no point not having your hair cut for a really long time when you come in, like you've got one wisp down the back. Um, and share pictures with your clients. One of my um, tricks is actually, um, I take a picture of my client's hair at the back of their head, um, and I show them on my, my picture, like, this is the length at the moment. Can you see how thick it is through the mid length? And as we get through to the ends, it's quite wispy. Can you show me how much you think I should take off today um, to get the hair back in the health that we want? And then so, because they haven't seen the, the back of their head for, uh, like probably eight to 12 weeks when they were last in your chair. So that's probably the first time they've seen the back of their head and they don't realise how wispy it's gone. So it's a really good tool to make sure you show them the back of the head. And take lots of pictures. Really important. If they've got a scalp issue, get in and get a close picture on, uh, on the scalp. With a hair and scalp practitioner, you get provided with a, a microscope to use. Get all these pictures and journal it as well because it's great to then share um, with other clients as well who have the same embarrassing um, problems and they don't want to approach it. But if you're showing success stories and journaling it, it might make them want to approach you about it. Um, okay. Um, Kirby, Kirby, sorry. She remembers uh, 
being Barbara's apprentice and she used to throw her combs away. Yeah, check your kit now. If you've got any combs with teeth missing, bin it, get rid of it. Um, clients gonna be looking at this. And I know as well, when I used to go and get my nails done in certain nail shops and I used to sit there and like physically feel sick as they were doing my nails because I knew they, they had used it on loads of other people beforehand and they weren't doing things properly. And now in these times, a lot of people aren't returning to salons like this. Uh, people are more aware. Um, so I've been doing, when, when we did go back, I was doing my own nails. Um, because if they had been taking certain strategies and putting them in place, I would have felt safe to go there. I don't know why I ever did go there. But anyway, let's go on to the next one. Uh, where are we? Okay. So as hairstylists, um, there are three main areas that we want to look at. We're not doctors. We're, we're not, not all of us are qualified trichologists. Um, so it's important that no, if a client has got damaged hair shaft, the scalp concern or fine thinning hair. So let's just say a client had psoriasis or they had alopecia areata. It's not our job to diagnose them or give them our prognosis. We, we are not qualified to do that. But if somebody has alopecia areata or psoriasis, they still have to wash their hair. And so it's our duty to give them the best recommendation, which we know really does help, um, and then maybe give them other advice where they go to the doctor. So no matter what it is, it will fall into one of these three categories. Um, and the way I like to treat it, I said, was with Euphora or Malibu C and can be census. Um, so those of you that are familiar with Euphora, you would have heard this before. But the reason why I choose Euphora is because how it is um, naturally formulated and it is 100% active ingredients. Um, so inside some of the shampoos, it's 75% organic pharmaceutical aloe vera gel. And in the conditioners, it's 85%. It's also in all the styling products as well. Whereas other shampoos, um, ones from the supermarket, they are based in water. And like it can be from 90 to 98% water in that product. And it is um, the law, it's legal that they have to write in order of what is in that product on the bottle. Um, so Euphora is based in aloe or um, some of the products are based in sage and thyme. Uh, with the aloe in the products, um, it has 20 out of the 25 amino acids, um, and it also has seven out of the eight essential amino acids. It's antibacterials, antiseptal, um, antiseptic, sorry, I'm making up words again. Um, so it really does help to treat any skin or hair or scalp conditions. Um, it's got stem cell technology in there. They use the stem cell from the aloe and they program it to make it a thousand times more effective. So when you put this product on your hair or skin, it's one time, it's like you've applied it over a thousand times. So you get a lot quicker results with it. Um, and it, some of the products have the pro amino peptide technology in there. And I tried to upload this picture onto the presentation, but it wouldn't upload. So I, I've got it on my phone. I don't know if you can see this, so the pro amino peptide um, formula, which is in our thickening and our hero range. So basically with hair loss, a lot of it is hormones and men and women both have testosterone. Um, so what happens is you have the five alpha reductase um, in the scalp, in the skin, and you have testosterone. And so when blood is flowing through your body, the blood is carrying testosterone and the testosterone meets the five um, alpha reductase and it attaches itself. And then, um, oh, sorry, T DH, um, it attaches itself and then it creates DHT, which then attacks the hair follicle and causes hair loss. So what the pro amino peptide complex does, you can see it there in the middle. It, oh, no, we've gone on all the pictures now. Oh God. It creates a barrier and it stops the, uh, the production of DHT. And it's the DHT which then becomes harmful to the follicle. 
So one thing as well with this, like I, I've seen um, something called um, Passion for Hair website recently about uh, the overproduction of um, sebum because somebody was massaging their scalp too much. Um, but if you're not using the thickening Euphora collection or the Hero collection and you were stimulating your scalp and shampooing your scalp or massaging your scalp, you're creating more blood flow, carrying the testosterone to the hair follicle, which is going to attach to the five alpha reductase and cause hair loss. So stimulating the scalp isn't good for people. Um, even though there's a myth that it is, it's not good for people if they're not using something to, to create a barrier to stop the DHT from forming. Um, so it's really important for clients to be using the products that have the pro amino peptide complex in there and the Q enzyme technology. Um, so I like Euphora because of all of those reasons. And uh, we, we've always gone over the Euphora story. The five key ingredients is the for, um, organic pharmaceutical aloe, um, aloe vera gel um, or the sage and thyme. The second one is the natural botanicals, which are in there for specific reasons to help the hair. Like for in the aloe range, we have water lily, which really helps to soothe the scalp. The third one um, is the natural essential oils, which gives it its fragrance as well. And they use specific natural essential oils for a specific reason in that product. And then the fourth one is the natural protein system, which is made of wheat, oat and soy, gluten free. Can I just say? Um, so this helps with strengthen the hair. And because it's natural protein, it doesn't build up and become too hard and cause breakage uh, like some other ranges who don't use uh, um, natural protein and you may have seen this before where a client has used a, a more of a protein range and then it actually ends up damaging the hair even more because they've used it too much so that does not happen with euphora and then the fifth one is the preservatives because everything i've just listed off um, is all natural so you'd have to keep it in the fridge and it would have a sell by date on it so we need something to preserve the product um, and what Euphora use is um, an, a natural food grade preservative, and it's actually found in green tea. Um, so they're the five key ingredients from Euphora. And so it's 100% active in that bottle. Um, and it's really good value for money as well. And you do get amazing results. And each promise that they have, they say you can achieve your goals within four weeks. Okay. And then the Malibu products. Why do I like the Malibu products? Um, again, all naturally derived ingredients in there. Um, they Every single product really um, helps remove um, any components or compounds that are found in water, but it does it gently because there are other um, products out there that can help um, remove certain things from the hair, from water, take minerals out, but they're very, very, very harsh and some very dangerous to use. Um, the, the vitamins that are all in there, you know, it's safe, it's vegan, um, and it's great for the skin as well as the scalp as well, and for the hair at the same time. So we use a lot of the Euphora and the Malibu together to achieve the goals that we want. And we, in our books as well, we've got all of the products that we work with, the product knowledge sheets. Uh, we've got some on the slides today, but this is all available on the P4H Pro site. It's got every product knowledge um, sheet in there. And that the reason why I like census, um, mainly for the hair shaft, is because it is more affordable than Euphora and Malibu. Um, but um, I don't find it's as medicated as what you would find from Euphora, like it to achieve certain um, certain scalp issues. But I love because they have the in salon ritual and it creates that experience and it personalizes. And what I love the most about Census as well and the Illumina range is that they have an app. I just want to show you on my phone. The Census app here. And then you can slide along to the Illumina treatments and you personalize it for your client. You formulate for their hair. So I'm going to click on it. And it asks type of hair on there. And you can do this in the salon. Um, let's say thick, um, wavy, very dry, highlighted. Click here. And it's frizzy and lifeless. And it gives you 
your personalized treatment and the amounts to use on that client. And it is amazing. They use um, uh, keratin in their products and a lot of naturally derived ingredients. And it just gives a personal ritual in the salon. Um, and it is more affordable. And you would rather your client use a professional product rather than going to the high street and buying something from the supermarket. Um, so we're looking at damaged hair shaft, scalp concerns, and fine thinning hair. Let me go on to the next slide. So the first one we're gonna look at is a damaged hair shaft and, um, and abnormalities as well. So I've got a little table here and some of the disorders or abnormalities um, can be caused by weathering. You may have heard this before. And so this can be uh, from the, the UV, uh, from the sun on the hair. It's like environmental damage to the hair. Excessive brushing. If people are getting their brush and going straight down like this, it's going to cause damage to the hair. Combing excessively, brushing when the hair's wet as well, damages, um, and damaged equipment that we just spoke about. Um, so when you are talking to your clients, show them, make a video, post it online, show them how they should be brushing their hair. Separate the hair, start from the ends and work your way up towards the root because if you start from the root and push down, you could end up with big knots in the hair. So by brushing your hair in this way in sections, starting from the ends, going towards the root, it's going to stop, um, it's going to uh, be less damage to your hair. Um, then we have a chemical damage, so perms, relaxers, um, over-processing uh, over colour. Um, so this is something that chemically damages the hair. Um, and, you know, it's a, a big topic. You need to make sure you're doing strand tests on your client if you are going to do certain colour processes on them. We may be seeing this quite a lot when we go back to the salon because people have been colouring their own hair at home. Hopefully not many of our clients, but people are. Um, so we need to have regimes in place ready for our clients and letting them know we have this available now, uh, what they can do at home now and what to expect, what treatments. If you haven't got a treatment menu made in your salon, now's the time to really be doing it because clients are going to want it. They're going to be looking at regimens. Um, heat um, damage or bubble hair. So using the heat tool incorrectly. Um, I remember watching somebody before using a tong. It was a YouTube video. And that's where your clients go to look for information if you're not sharing the information with them. And she was curling her hair and um, the, the hair just come up in her hand because she obviously didn't have the correct product on it and she held it too long. And the, the tool couldn't have had much protection in there either. Um, and bubble hair. So bubble hair is when people maybe straighten their hair when they've not dried it enough because if the, there's still water molecules in the hair and they go in with a heat tool, the, the water can almost boil and then like a kettle and then it, it spreads, it gets bigger and then it can cause the hair to break as well. So um, making sure your clients are drying their hair correctly um, after they've shampooed it and before they're using any heat tools. And another thing I'm going to mention now as well, it's really important for clients to blow dry their hair and scalp after shampooing or if they have curls and they don't want to go in and fully dry their hair, making sure that they dry their scalp and they're treating their scalp. Because if you leave your hair wet, um, you're leaving an, an environment for fungus and um, bacteria. You know, if you don't dry your hands after um, washing your hands, you get sore chapped hands and it's even worse for the scalp. So sharing that information with clients as well. Um, Fragilitis cranium, which is the professional term for split ends and uh, it's caused by ir irregular cuts. So a lot of people when we go, go back are gonna be suffering with fragilitis cranium um, and you know making sure that we're using the right treatments on their hair for this, making sure we've got them back in for regular cuts, especially if they don't want you to take enough off, then they, you know, their hair's quite damaged and they don't want you to take the six inches off that they need you know, they only want the three inches off. Okay, we need you back in here for the next four to six weeks to have another little trim um, because otherwise it's just going to break up, uh, break off and it's going to keep splitting up your hair shaft and cause uh, shorter breakage as well. 
Then we have trichorexis nodosa, and this can be hereditary, it can be genetic, but it can also be from excessive drying as well, or it could be a thyroid dis disorder. So I mentioned earlier, we're not doctors. If you notice this on your client, just recommend them to go to the, the doctor for a, an appointment, the GP, um, and then you're going to give them the, the best advice to how to look after their hair, whether it is a thyroid disorder or whether it's from excessive drying, they're still going to want to look after the rest of their hair. So oh. I've just got a picture here what trichorexis nodosa looks like. So some of you may have seen this before. Um, you know, the hair becomes really, really fragile. So it's important that we give all the right information and we're going to use the correct products to treat it and recommend them just go to the GP to check as well or a trichologist. Um, okay, let me go on to the next slide. And then we've just got a picture of Fragilitis Cranium and all of our clients are going to have this when we go back because the, the hair starts to split. Like you think about it, this hair through my ends, this is probably about five years old. So it does become a little bit more sensitive and it's important that we have it cut regularly. So how do we deal with these in salon? What do we do? What products do we use? Um, and I mentioned why I like certain products for certain reasons. So you have your in salon um, ritual from Census, and we do have the Malibu C one as well. So again, always start with crystal gel because that's going to allow the other products to go in and do what they really need to do. And then this I actually got off the People H Pro site. All this information is on there, and it has a table telling you what to do depending on the hair type. So we want to repair because it's damaged hair shaft or hair shaft abnormalities. And there's loads more. There's hundreds of different disorders of the hair and scalp, but we're only picking out a few today. When we do that, if you do come on the um, hair and scalp practitioner course, we go, we look at a few more. Um, so if you've got someone with dry or brittle hair, you would use the heart rehydrate and the custom wellness remedy and miracle repair. So the crystal gel and rehydrate and then the repair. If you've got someone with damaged or split ends, crystal gel and rehabilitate, which helps to re, um, rehabilitate the hair basically, and the miracle repair. So the miracle repair, some of you have seen these boxes that we've got, um, and it's the two sachets. But, and then you have a specialized remedy. And sometimes it does recommend to mix certain ones together again, again to personalize that remedy. Um, or if they've got dull hair, again, crystal gel with the Illuminate and the Miracle Repair sachet there. Um, so again, you're gonna be creating a relaxing experience. Um, you're, you're gonna be showing them how to, to treat their hair as well with it, not just putting it on like that. We're talking them through relaxing massage. Uh, so it's an experience as well, not, not just a service. Okay. Let me go on to the next slide. So I've just got a picture here of the, um, the three different rehabilitate, rehydrate, um, just and the illuminate to show you. And yeah, you can mix them all together um, as well in certain amounts for certain hair types, and they've got all the graph on there um, on the People H Pro site, depending on how you, you might want one um, part of each one if you want to rehydrate, rehabilitate, and add shine and a miracle repair. Um, so, you know, making sure that you're, you comb it through when it's on, leaving it for up to 15 minutes, even applying heat when it's got the treatment on the hair. Um, and they're going to have it done regularly, you know, depending on how damaged that the hair is, um, how often do they need to be doing that? How do you need to see them within the next um, two weeks to do another treatment? Um, that's down to you to judge the hair, do a porosity test, do your strand test, check the elasticity and, you know, making sure that they've got the correct products at home. Um, so I'm just going to go on to the next slide. So these are some of the product fact sheets um, that just, which again is available on the People H Pro site. 
Um, and I share this information with my clients as well. Uh, I know we've been talking a lot about digital consultations and sometimes I might send them a little bit of information of the products I'm going to be using and why I'm going to be using that on their hair. Like you can just attach it and send it to your client um, just so they know what you're using and why you're using it. And again, they, they want to look at the remedies you have. They may have done, they want to do research beforehand. Um, and it's great that sometimes you can send them the information directly so they know what's best for them. Um, and yeah, so with the crystal gel, we always have to use the undo goo first so to shampoo the hair. And that's because it's on a pH balance of a level nine. So it really helps um, to, to cleanse the hair deeply, to prep it, to make sure we, um, we can get all the good ingredients to do what they have been made to do. So this is available on P4H Pro if you want to print it off. Um, and then this is the Census Illumina um, range, and they are fantastic. And also they smell really nice. So it's great for you to, one thing that I like about the ritual is um, if you do have this in the salon, you can recommend it for every single client. I know we go through and look at the scalp and the hair, but this I recommend by, you can either have it as a quick upgrade, as an extra five pound and, you can personalize by mixing up the ritual specifically for them and just leaving it on for three minutes, um, an extra five pound, and they get the experience of do, going over the the online consultation um, the, uh, to specifically get it personalized for them. Or you can charge um, an extra 10 pounds. Uh, I don't know how much you want to charge, but I'm just saying as an example. Um, to then use the treatment, but to put it under heat and give another massage and you're leaving it on for 15 minutes as well. So you're trying to upgrade and they're going to get benefit on their hair either way um, of what they choose to do. So um, sometimes they don't have the extra time to do it, but they do want a treatment. So this is a great way. It's no extra time. It's only an extra five pound, but um, we're going to personalize to your specific needs for your hair with this one. So it depends what you choose for what client for what reason. Um, if your client has got damaged hair um, and they still want it colored, I wouldn't be going in with bleach on their hair. Um, but you know, maybe going in with coloring their roots, doing a, a root smudge um, and treating their hair, you can do standalone treatments. Um, and just to avoid any damage to the hair, I when my clients come to see me for an appointment, they have at least three treatments put on their hair. Um, I won the crystal gel beforehand or uh, the color prep. Um, I am using the uh, color elixir in with my uh, pre lightener, so in with my bleach, because um, it, it helps to rebond the hair when we're coloring it. So it's really helping with the condition. Most clients know about rebonders. If you're not using them in your salon at the moment, you need to get these in. Um, because people don't want the colour their hair without it now. I don't give my clients the choice. I include it within my price of my colour services. Um, and then I'll go in with a treatment after, whether it's Euphora or Census treatment um, or one of the Malibu ones. So they're getting free treatments already. But one big thing that is going to be very, very big is the scalp treatments. If you have a scalp, you need to treat it. Um, so that is something that I'm going to be including when I go back now, making sure my clients are having some sort of scalp treatment. Um, your scalp is an extension of your face and people are exfoliating their skin on their face. They're, they're putting, um, mineral waters, uh, creams. I know I've got a three step, uh, process that I do with my, uh, facial care. Um, but what are we doing? When do you treat your scalp? You know, your scalp is the, the, the base of what's going to create a healthy environment for the hair to grow from. Um, and it's actually the, the treatments that we recommend are really nice for, uh, and refreshing, invigorating. So we're going to be looking at that. If you haven't got a scalp um, treatment in the salon, it's something that you need to add to your menu. And, um, and also the Euphora scalp um, massager and scalp brush. Um, if you haven't seen that, it's a hero one, but it's absolutely amazing to use as a scalp brush. Um, we're going to come into this later. I'm getting uh, off track now. But yeah, and then we have, if uh, you don't use the uh, color elixir in, added into your pre-lightener, we have the Mixable Plus. 
uh, from the census range. And the mix of all plus stops the bonds from breaking in the first place. So you need to be using one of these uh, two products in with your color. Um, so to avoid damaging the hair and the health of the hair should be our, our prime at the top, our main reason. Um, okay, so the next one, if somebody has got chemically processed hair, uh, the treatments that I'll be looking at using on them would be from the Euphora BE range. This is the Euphora's more luxury range. Um, this is the one that's based in Sage and Thyme. And it has the damage cure complex and the vibrant color complex in there. You get um, a result within one use of this. So this is great for any chemically processed hair or um, really damaged hair. Um, you've got the bodifying um, shampoo and conditioner or the intense moisture shampoo and conditioner. So obviously, if you've got somebody who, who's quite fine, you choose the bodifying um, or somebody with quite thick hair, you would use the intense moisture um i've actually used both of these on my hair i i uh, alternate between the two and you can actually feel the difference on it but i love both of them they're amazing um and also making sure you're using the elixir one and a mask as well and these are products that they can buy to use at home and the repair leave-in treatment elixir spray um because again it's 60 percent what we do in the salon and then 40 percent what they do at home and then um, with the um color elixir and mixable plus you can use that as standalone treatments in the salon as well but again crystal gel the hair first um and make sure you like you can have it as all included as in one treatment so you have certain prices if you want whatever works for you um so the next slide yep yeah, so these are the uh, product um knowledge sheets as well so it tells you what it does You've got a little bit about the damage cure complex on there and the vibrant color complex. So the dam damage cure complex, it actually shows you under the microscope how much it improves the condition of the hair after one use. Um, and the vibrant color complex shows you it, it makes the color last up to 30 percent longer. Um, so if a client's having their hair done in the salon um, and they, they've had paid all this money to have their hair colored, but they go home and they use a shampoo that's just going to take it all out. What is the point? a bit like the story i was saying earlier like if you go and have a facial done and you use all these lovely products on and then you go home and use something from the high street you're just going to undo everything um so it's just got some of the key ingredients all in there as well like in the um uh the bodifying you've got the metaphone seed extract but in the intense moisture one it's got the tri sugar complex in there so it's good to just Go over some of the ingredients and you're never going to remember all of them either. Um, like a doctor doesn't remember everything that he tells you, but it's there for you to research and then to the client and go over as well. And this is a great thing about the digital consultation that we spoke about earlier, um, because you can be a little bit more prepared. You can see what you want to work on. You can do a little bit more research on the products beforehand before they come in. If you just need to re refresh that. Okay. So I was just saying about um, this picture here is the hair under the microscope before. So you can see all the cracks um, in the structure of the hair. And then after one, um, one application, one shampoo from using this. Um, and that's another thing as well. It is when you are recommending to your clients to do the hair, make sure that they are um, shampooing their hair twice when they're using the product because the first shampoo is going to remove build up and residue and the second shampoo you're really going to get the ingredients into the hair um and then there's a picture before uh with the um color um vibrant color complex and without so the difference it makes on the hair um so we also have the nourish promise from with um, within Euphora. And when it comes to um, hair and scalp health, they are all amazing. Um, but you need to specifically choose the correct uh, shampoo or conditioner for that client. And I was saying earlier about treating the root, uh, your scalp and the ends of your hair differently. So you may need one shampoo for the scalp and one for the ends, but a particular one from this Nourish range which is absolutely amazing and for every single client, every client that has a scalp. 
Um, and this is actually urgent repair uh, shampoo and urgent repair treatment. So it really does treat the hair. It's very invigorating. It's got um, it's got the certified aloe in there. It's got menthol. Um, it's very refreshing. You can almost feel it tingling on the scalp. But um, using it, the the shampoo will again help remove minerals. So when I'm in the salon, my first shampoo for my client before I'm shampoo to going through the shampoo process, I'll use the urgent repair shampoo, and again it's color safe as well. And then I'll go in with my chosen shampoo to really get the ingredients in there. Um, and the urgent repair treatment, again, it can be used on the hair for a scalp treatment because of the ingredients that's in there. It can also be used as a foot mask. It can be used on any aches or pains in your body. Um, I know since I stopped doing hairdressing, not being in the salon, my, my body started to give up in me on, on, on areas because it's not being moved and exercised like it was. So it's really great. Um, I actually, once I was using um, Vicks on uh, aches and pains in my body and I had a headache and I come out in a big breakout in my skin um, and I thought, my God, why don't I use the urgent repair? And it's really good on aches and pains and as a foot mask as well. So this is something from Salon Love that you can be recommending to your clients as well. Um, and the next one, we've got the Beautifying Serum, which is a great leaving wearing treatment on the hair it's got argan oil neem oil cuckoo oil cranberry oil it's amazing as a leave-on treatment on the hair it doesn't weigh the hair down but it's also great for the skin you can use it as a primer on your face you can mix it with your face cream i actually use this product more on my body i put it on before i put my body cream on i put it on my beautifying serum and then i put on my aloe therapy cream um and it is amazing it's very good for insect bites sunburn um eczema dry scalp but um using the urgent repair shampoo and the urgent repair treatment and the beautifying serum in equal amounts is the best scalp treatment i've ever come across it's amazing so if you're thinking what can i use as a scalp treatment using that alongside with the scalp wellness sachets um from the Malibu range um, and the Scalp Wellness Shampoo and Conditioner. So you four have already done um, a menu for you, which you can use, you can make your own, but they have one which is for scalp rejuvenation, uh, moisture infusion for the hair, there's a treatment that they have there if your hair's needing nourishment, uh, the damage cure treatment, uh, they have that there for you or the color refresh treatment. So if you want this, we can you can get it off the People H Pro site. Um, and you can have this um, treatment already done, menu made for you. And they work amazingly. And you would just, sometimes you can mix two together as well. Like I'm doing scalp reju rejuvenation on everybody alongside something else when I go back to the salon as well with the crystal gel as well. Um, and then the next sheet, it just shows you how step by step, how you would, would mix that. Um, so if you want to take a picture of this or I can upload it into the People H Pro site or Declan can do it. Um, but it just gives you the uh, formulation, how you mix it together, what you use, what products you use. And also the um, rejuvenating shampoo and scalp massage, which is our step three out of um, our um, eight step criteria. Um, so it set everything there up for you. And by doing this alongside with the mood can really create that spa environment. Okay. Do I have any questions? I will go to questions at the end, but that is um, scalp um, hair shaft abnormalities and disorders. Um, we're going to go on to the next one now. And we're going to come to all the questions after guys. Okay. So healthy scalp. So, we were talking about scalp concerns. How are we going to get a healthy scalp and common concerns with it? So um, we've got the first one I've got up here is eczema. And it says irritants such as soaps, detergents, including shampoo, because a lot of other shampoos out there contain harmful ingredients to the scalp. Um, and a lot of you will be familiar with them. And a lot of them are quite on buzz, buzzword trends that go, go around it, what isn't good. 
um, for the scalp. Um, I know some of you have heard me speak about MI, methylizylene, which is in some shampoos um, and conditioners still, but it's been banned. And I think it was it 2016, they banned it completely from leave on products, but it was causing a lot of allergies, irritants on people's scalp and hands because obviously they shampoo their hair with it and it goes all down their body when they're in the shower as well. Um, bubble bath, it can be environmental, environmental factors um, and allergens such as cold or dry weather, dampness, um, or it could be uh, from house and dust mites, pet fur, pollen, moles. And there is a question saying, can it be autoimmune? I'm always researching, reading different uh, papers, and um, some people have suggested it could be autoimmune as well. Um, and a lot of the scalp conditions, again, it isn't for us to diagnose people as hairstylists, but it's good to familiarise yourself and try and um, and look. But if somebody has got eczema, they need to go to the doctor for it. But um, even the doctor can sometimes confuse certain scalp conditions because doctors only study 10% of the hair and skin and scalp to get their qualification. Um but when you look at eczema, psoriasis and sebderm, um, they can look quite similar. It can be quite hard to see which one is which. But the difference mainly between eczema and sebderm is that eczema is more of an allergy and um, sebderm is a fungus. So the way the doctor would treat it would be different. But the way we treat it in the salon would be the same because we're just doing topical um topical treatments to help with um it with the symptoms that they're having the itching the uncomfortableness etc um the next one psoriasis we've got a little picture on this bit um and the pit the, with psoriasis one way to be able to look and not diagnose it but recognize it it's well defined uh, it's a well-defined areas very red thickened areas of the skin um with large silvery scales so the scales the, the dandruff is looking very silvery um, and it can also be on other area areas of the skin and it can also cause pitted nails as well so that's one way to know is it eczema or is it psoriasis because you can tell from these um different symptoms that they have um again uh, psoriasis is a, a common skin condition and it's a speed up of the life cycle of the skin cells so it's like an overproduction in the epidermis layer of the skin something's creating the skin to shed a lot quicker. It causes cells to build up rap rapidly um, and form scales and red patches are itchy and sometimes painful and more of a burning sensation. This is another point of differentia of being able, oh, I'm making up words again, but to dif differentiate um, psoriasis and eczema is eczema is very, very itchy, um, very uncomfortably itchy. Whereas psoriasis is quite itchy, but sometimes more of a burning sensation rather than itchiness. Um, psoriasis is a chronic disease that of, often comes and goes. And the main goal of treatment is to stop the skin cells from growing so quickly. Um, so we work topically with it. Um, it can be, again, an autoimmune um, response. Uh, people don't know why. Could it be stress? Could it be something they're eating? Um, but we can, and all the uh, regimens we put in place will 100% uh, in, improve and increase the appearance of the condition and relieve uh, some of the symptoms that they are having. Okay, let me go on to the next one. I hope some of you aren't eating your lunch right now with some of the pictures we're going to be showing in a minute. <laughs> um, so seborrheic dermatitis, sebderm, as I've just mentioned, is a common skin condition um, that affects uh, your scalp. It causes scaly patches, red skin, and stubborn dandruff, more of a uh, yellowy colour. Um, it can affect uh, parts of the body, face, eyebrows, ears, eyelids, chest. It's a, a yeast fungus, as I just mentioned. It's a fungus, and it's called malazia. There, I can't pronounce it. Um, but that is the oil in the secretion of the skin. Um, it's an irregular response of the immune system. It can be genetic and it can be caused by environmental factors. Um, Sebderm is like an adult version of cradle cap. 
and Cradle Cap is like a, a baby version of Sebderm. Um, and actually, I had a client once who she was diagnosed with psoriasis and she came to see me at the salon um, and I was treating her with the crystal gel, with the scalp treatments. We got amazing results and she carried on with it at home. But as I was um, going through my consultation with her, I thought this doesn't look like psoriasis to me. I would say she had been diagnosed by a doctor as um, psoriasis. And I said, some of the um, symptoms that you're having is more sebderm. Maybe you should go back to your doctor and discuss this with him. And she did. And the doctor said that, um, yeah, that, that her hairstylist was correct, that it was sebderm and he had misdiagnosed her. Um, but it's about treating it topically to make it more comfortable and bearable. Um, and then we've got dandruff. Many people can get dandruff at some point in their life. Um, it's a dry, flaky scalp, usually accompanied by itching or overproduction, the shed shedding of the epidermal cells. It could be a sensitivity to products or an intolerance. Okay, so here's dandruff, a close-up picture of what it looks like. You can see that the scalp doesn't look particularly red. Um, it looks, when you look under this, like a healthy scalp apart from the dandruff flakes. Uh, that is uh, the appearance of it. Um, going to go on to the next picture. Here we have a baby cradle cap and a little boy's cradle cap. Um, and you can see the top picture is before one treatment. And then the underneath picture was a treatment done at home. Um, and obviously we can still treat it in the salon as well. And again, it, you're not going to achieve the goal sometimes by one appointment. It might be you need to see them twice a week for the first couple of weeks, etc. And they need to be using the products at home daily, every single day with any scalp condition. Because if you're only using these products once every few days, you're not treating it how you need to be. Um, okay, go on to the next one. Here we have a picture of um, eczema. Um, so you can see uh, it's, it can be quite red. Um, sometimes you might see where it looks um, like they've been scratching it at as well. Um, and so, yeah, with eczema, it can go on different parts of the body as well. So eczema, you find it sort of like inside this area here at the back of your knees. Um, Whereas psoriasis would be more the outside areas. Um, and uh, that's where they would have more, if you want to be able to differentiate eczema and psoriasis as well. Okay, so what do we do? So thinking back, it's going to go back to here again, the urgent repair, uh, shampoo and conditioner. Obviously going in with crystal gel first to really cleanse the scalp, cleanse the hair, get rid of any impurities, any minerals, um, any medication just to remove all of that and then go in with equal amounts when we think of the scalp rejuvenation, the shampoo, um, urgent repair shampoo, urgent repair treatment and the beautifying serum and applying it directly onto the scalp um, and going through using your scalp brush, removing some of the uh, dandruff as well to get rid of that appearance um, and then also using your scalp wellness sachet. Um, they can buy them in a pack of, is it four or six you get in a pack? Um, and using that in the salon and then maybe just using the, the sachet weekly at home um, just to really help. It helps to balance um, the, the scalp and the production of uh, the dandruff as well because it's um, moisturising and it does it naturally. Unlike some shampoos that your clients would have been recommended by the doctor, um, and I'm sure some of you may even have been recommended yourself certain shampoos on the scalp, which it isn't really good to use um, uh, for long term because um, one, it's not good for your hair. It can weaken the skin. Uh, you know, some people get recommended steroids, steroid creams. And again, that just weakens your skin over time. Um, and, you know, whatever you put on your skin, it's absorbed within 28 seconds into your into your body. So um, that's why I choose to work with these natural derived products and still get the result that I want to get. Um, so this 
when they're at home, like you might use this treatment for in salon, but then also the aloe therapy shampoo and conditioner. In the hair and scalp practitioner, like we go through and we do lots of treatments in one day. We go in and treat it with um, the crystal gel, then the scalp um, treatments. And then we might go in with the aloe therapy, which soothes it and finishes as well. So you, you go through lots of treatments in one process. Um, and this is great. For them to use at home because they can use the shampoo as a body wash as a bubble bath and you know it's fine if it gets on their skin and um, when they're in the shower so you've got the shampoo and conditioner it's got the aloe stem cell technology so it makes it a thousand times more effective it's got a lot of vitamin c and um, the tri sugar blend in there um so you've got the shampoo the conditioner um, and then you have the aloe mist which is great to use directly on the scalp as well um and it's also really nice to use on the body. Best after sun spray ever. Gives you a tan for forever. And then you've got the cream as well. So the body cream. If anyone does have a scalp condition, it's going to be sometimes on their body as well. Um, so this has all that ingredients inside the body cream. They even have a, a lip balm as well. Um, it's really nice. And this is all available on the Salon Love app if you want to start promoting it right now. Um, especially with Valentine's coming up, a lot of self-love, I think, this year. Um, here is the scalp, um, Malibu scalp sachet, and this is the, the product, um, information, product knowledge sheet. Um, the, um, so here it says the first ever 100% um, vegan crystallized flake fighter. Um, it instantly begins to soothe itching and irritation infused with one of a kind uh, blend of soothing botanicals and essential oils. Um, and it's safe for lifestyle use and like many traditional scalp products, which we were just talking about. Um, so it's a lot more comfortable for our clients to use. And again, scalp therapy is going to be for anyone that has a scalp. Um, scalp uh, treatment, uh, we're going to come very big and so we need to make sure we're recommending this to clients even if they don't have a scalp condition they need to be treating their scalp um let me go on to the next one and then we have the the scalp uh, wellness pack healthy scalp where it comes with the shampoo the conditioner and the um sachets included within the pack and it is amazing and it's great for all ages as well it's great for people that have oily scalp dry scalp it just helps to regulate the the and balance the production on the scalp um i just need to plug my charger in it's just said my battery's low luckily i've got i was prepared and i have my charger here ready sorry guys there we go um yeah so sometimes i have clients that they use the healthy scalp pack, healthy scalp pack um, for so many, uh, like until they get to the end of that, and then they'll go to the aloe therapy, and then they'll go back to the healthy scalp. Um, they they just like to mix it up sometimes. I've got some clients that use the healthy scalp as their first shampoo, and then they use the aloe therapy as the second shampoo. Um, so you've just got to find what works for your client and their lifestyle. Um, and then so you can recommend the client to have the scalp treatment at home at the moment if they want, and they can use that as a, a foot mask with the Euphora range. Let me go down. Where are we now? So some added tips for healthy scalp. Um, so you need to find the selected regime that you want for your client, what's going to work with them. And that's why sometimes speaking to clients beforehand, digital consultation, when it comes to the health of the hair and the scalp, and not just for um, color corrections with, when you're using a digital consultation, just so you can be a little bit more prepared. You can send them information beforehand if you need. Um, and then another selection may be needed for the remainder of the hair like i mentioned earlier i've got some clients got really thick curly hair but they have a scalp condition so i may recommend the um, malibu scalp wellness for the scalp and then i might use the be uh, range from euphora for them to shampoo on the rest of their hair um, and that also treats the scalp as well so you can shampoo you just shampoo that first and then shampoo with your be range after um, 
if colouring, always check for abrasions um, before applying any colour of anyone if the client does have a scalp condition because that can be really unpain really painful and uncomfortable. Using a Euphora colour prep spray in any areas or all over the scalp um, or the, the sensors balm um, application to uh, protect the scalp. Um, make sure you're recommending the correct home care um, and telling them how to use it, when they should use it. Um, and I also sometimes put in some added tips on there as well. We're going to come to that in a bit. Um, and how they need to be treating it, uh, like, initially. Like, the first week, I need you to be shampooing. If someone's got a scalp disorder, they need to be shampooing their hair every day and using um, the hair dryer after as well. Because if you're leaving a, a wet environment, it's going to create more of a problem. Um and the reason why daily use, because, you know, we need to get the product onto the scalp. And also, if, you know, they, they're, they're sweating and their sweat is drying on their scalp and, and it can become quite um, uncomfortable and lead to more problems. So people used to say shampooing daily wasn't good for the hair. And if you're shampooing using the incorrect product, then, yeah, that isn't good for the hair. But it is good when you are using a good product um, and creating a healthy scalp environment. Um, yeah, so dry styling every day as well. If, like they don't shampoo their hair the next uh, morning or day, just making sure they go through and they dry style. Right, where are we, guys? Sorry. So fine thinning hair. Um, over fifty percent of men by the time they're in their 30s, will experience some form of um, hair loss. And by the time they're in their 50s, up to 80% of men are going to experience hair loss. Um, and in women as well, you know, one in three women will experience hair loss by the time they're in their 30s. Um, so it is a big topic. And I don't know whether because I... Um, I look for it more now that I see a lot more people having problems with hair loss or um, whether it's it's just becoming a lot more common now. Um, and I know with the COVID situation, um, a lot of people that have had COVID, some of the symptoms after can be hair loss because um, when you are ill and have a temperature, um, that can cause um, diffuse alopecia, which means probably about six weeks after having um uh, a temperature it can cause temporary hair loss um so you know it's a really important subject it's a, a way that we can help prevent hair loss by doing certain regimes on our hair and help treat hair loss and it is a really touchy subject um because it can really affect mental health um and the way that people you know a lot of people suffer with body dysmorphia i've had a lot of clients that had more hair than me but they felt that it felt thin to them um, so it's a, a, a topic we need to approach with um, uh, care and empathy um, but we're going to look at some of the common concerns there's lots of different types of hair loss um, but uh, diffuse alopecia and this is a temporary alopecia it means it it normally um, is only temporary the hair is going to grow back as long as we do the correct things um, so you've got telogen aflethium postpartum hair loss, which happens um, from up to three months to one year after having a baby, uh, you have hair loss. And diastrophic alopecia, uh, you know, a certain alopecia that happens from medications, um, chemo, etc. cetera. Um, and it's a gradual hair loss without any itching or scaling present. Affects females in a, uh, for a variety of reasons. It can be um, caused by following pregnancy, changing in hormone levels we we're talking about hormones um, earlier on the, the contraceptive pill pill thyroid problems iron deficiencies illness um, or a side effect of certain medication um, so all of them uh, all of these uh, lists that are on here can, it can affect many people um, and so with our regimes that we have, it takes up to four to six weeks, I think, to really notice the difference as long as, you know, other things that are going to make an impact are our diets, um, 
certain supplements that we can take, making sure we're getting enough sleep, you know, is it stress? And sometimes it isn't stress directly. It's the complications of stress. Like if you're stressed, you're, you're not going to sleep as much. You're going to drink more. You, you might comfort eat. Um, so it's all of that together. Um, we've got traction alopecia. This is very, very common. I see it a lot. I've had it myself from when I've had extensions. Um, but it's hair loss at the point of tension. For example, tight plaiting, braiding can result in hair loss at the base of the plaits, uh, the loosening of the hair follicle, constant, constant pulling. Um, and it's just um, tension at the root of the hair. Um, and it can uh, cause temporary hair loss, or it can be permanent if it's repeated over time, uh, because you can scar the follicle. Um, so, you know, if you are doing hair extensions in the salon, making sure your client's coming back in regularly for uh, scalp treatments, um, for you to make sure that they're keeping them, um, keeping them good in the hair, they're not take them out uh, because that is your work that they're advertising. Um, so, yeah, I would be really strict with that and making sure they're looking after it correctly or, you know, making sure they're using the, the correct hair bands and not pulling too tight. Uh, the next one I've got is alopecia areata. Uh, so it's a small round bald patch on the scalp with surrounding hair being short, appeared frayed. Um, the skin in the patch is normally pale, quite glossy. Sometimes it's good to press down to see how quickly the blood, blood comes back to the surface. Um, it, can it can happen overnight. Uh, it can be genetic, it can be stress, and sometimes people don't even know why it happens. Um, you can get excessive alopecia areata, which will be 50% or more of the hair that comes out, or less than 50%. If it's less than 50%, a lot of the time it does come back if you start inflict inflicting the right regimes um, and treating the areas. And also, if you are going to have hair loss, like the rest of the hair that's left, it's important we're looking after the condition um, because the finer the hair, the more it can become damaged. Like an, an average um, head of hair can hold, um, I think it's like 23 tons or something altogether. Like if you twist it together, it's very, very strong. But if, you, and if you've got hair loss, it's not gonna be that strong. It means the hair can break a lot easier. One strand of hair can hold 100 grams. That's how strong hair is. Um, let me go on to the next one. Uh, so we've got androgenic alopecia male and androgenic alopecia female. Andro is a hormone. Genic means genetic. Um, so it's very, very common. Um, male pattern hair loss usually starts receding around the hairline um, and into the crown. Um, eventually the whole vertex is void and the length of time the hair is in anagen phase reduces uh, and it gradually became, becomes shorter, finer. It starts to get something called, we, we call it mineralization. It's where the strand of hair becomes a lot finer um, because it's not getting everything it needs nutrient wise or um, because of the DHT. Um, androgenic alopecia female, female pattern hair loss usually starts receding the hairline, loss of crown area, eventually the whole vertex is void, um, it, again it's the same, it, it miniaturizes. So they may not be having hair loss but their hair feels finer because the strands aren't as thick. Okay, so there's so many different types of hair loss. You know, you've got alopecia uh, universal, which is where people lose hair from all over their body. Alopecia totalis, which is um, when all the hair goes from the scalp. So if somebody's just got one patch left on the hair, that means it's still alopecia, uh, alopecia areata, because there is some hair on the scalp. We're not going to go over everything today. And we do treat, treat any form of hair loss in the salon in the same way, no matter what type of hair loss they have. It's not our job to diagnose, it's our job to treat hair loss on the scalp. Okay, so we've got some pictures here for you guys. Um, so this is female pattern hair loss, male pattern hair loss. Um, so you can see it's become really fine around the hairline. Um, it's, um, and it's what the worst area because for women, when you're tying your hair up, 
you can really notice it around the hairline as well. So rather than trying to get to the point where you want to, um, where you have you have to treat it, treat the symptoms, it's best to prevent prevent the hair loss. Um, so any women that are pregnant, it's best to get these um, regimes in place before they have the baby, before it gets to that hair loss to try and prevent or slow down any hair loss that they're going to experience. Let me just calm down. We've got diffuse alopecia, so um, hair loss that happens um, after illness, etc. It does normally come back. Here we have traction alopecia, um, so tying the hair up too tight. Um, you know, these are just good pictures and things to find whilst you're talking on certain topics online, social media, sharing with your clients. So how would we treat it? So again, any form of hair loss, we need a scalp treatment first. We need to remove the minerals to build up, medication out of the hair with the crystal gel and go in with a scalp treatment using scalp wellness, um, scalp wellness and the uh, scalp rejuvenation from Euphora. Any form of hair loss, they need the thickening range. The thickening range from Euphora um, has the pro amino peptide complex in there um, so it helps again the stop the uh, production of DHT it's got aloe stem cell technology in there this is a shampoo and conditioner may, maybe that they only need on their head on their scalp and then they use something else through their ends but you need to use it regularly for it to do its job if you only use it once every other week it's not going to do its job. You don't go to the gym once a year and expect to have a really lovely body. It's something you need to work at. And it's the same with um, hair growth. Um, so the, the thickening shampoo and conditioner and also what they would need, and this is what they can do at home. But the scalp therapy sachets, again, creating a healthy scalp environment and the Euphora thickening scalp treatment. I've got one here. It's absolutely amazing. I think everyone needs one. Whether you feel you have hair loss or not, it just stops, prevents it in the long run. I always use it on my, my hairline around here every morning, twice a day. They need to use this at home. Um, and if they're not, if they're, they're not, they're applied, like I, if I'm going to apply this now, I'll use my hair dryer and rub it in. Again, it's okay to stimulate the scalp when you're using the thickening range because the pro amino peptide complex that's in there. Okay. And so if it's a male client, um, you've got the Euphora Hero and it has the same technology in there. Um, and but it just, it, this is more for your male client, the packaging's different. Um, and also the fragrance is quite different. And what they use for the fragrance and the Euphora products are natural essential oils. And so everything's natural that you can smell, but if you haven't smelled this, it is amazing. Um, and so you've got the complete shampoo and the revitalizing treatment. Um, they do have a really great starter kit, actually, with the smaller sizes. Great Valentine's present. Um, if any of you ladies need an idea of what to get your other half for um, Valentine's. And they also have their scalp spray treatment as well. Um, in the thickening range, um, they have a thickening serum as well. And that is great to give you an instant result. It's got ingredients in there that when you apply heat, it gives it a fuller, thicker appearance. So you get a, an, an immediate result. Um, but you need to be using the rest of the regime for it to actually work on the scalp and prevent and help with hair growth. Um, another, oh, I've got it here, another great one to help hide those areas or the areas of uh, thinning is the Conceal when it comes in five different colours. And I might actually just quickly pop some on now so you can, oh, I can get the lid off. comes like this and it's got a little brush there. This is something your clients can use right now, but literally you can apply it on the scalp, on the hair, and it just gives you a fuller, thicker appearance. It hides the scalp a little bit more. And the difference between this and other ones that you buy from the supermarket is that this is a scalp treatment at the same time. It's not gonna clog or block the fo follicle um, like some hair powders, dry shampoos, etc. do. So that's why the Euphora styling products are really important to use alongside these products as well. Okay. Are you all still here with me? I know it's a lot of information to get through, so I'm just going through it now. But I, I can, if you've got any like other things that you want to talk to me about or go dig in a little deeper, feel free to reach out to me. 
Uh, we're going to look at this quickly, the infestation or contagious um, disorders. Ringworm, or uh, known as tinea capitis, it's contagious. I know a little boy and he was diagnosed by the doctor as um, alopecia because it happens in circles with ringworm and it can cause hair loss. Um, and the doctor said he had alopecia, so he didn't have the, the treatment for him. And he ended up losing almost half of his head because the ringworm had spread and gone to loads of areas. Uh, his mum had actually then gone to a private doctor. She reached out to me after she'd done all of this. And then you know, it was ringworm and it was treated and it cleared up and his hair grew back. Um, but it can um, it appears a small red spots um, and the centre begins to clear a, a, around the centre a clear ring and a raised border and it can become quite scaly and it can create ball patches. It is contagious um, and that's why it's important with um, confident and uh, like precise consultation before you go through and start doing any other services on your client's hair. Um, to make sure that they don't have anything like this. Um, Impetigo, this is contagious. It can form on the head or anywhere else on the body. Ringworm can go anywhere else on the body as well. Um, it's like a small uh, blisters. Uh, it's normally a secondary symptom. So somebody might have head lice or somebody um, has a spot and they itch it and some bacteria gets inside it, then it forms impetigo. So it might not be the first thing. It's something, the secondary symptom. Um, Again, it's very, very contagious. All of these, they need to be recommended to go to the doctor as well. But I would be recommending them to use in the, you know, the, the aloe products on their skin, on their scalp, um, scalp sachets, etc. Um, I wouldn't have this as a, if you had anyone that had any of these uh, in, in the salon, um, I wouldn't uh, as a normal appointment uh, because it is contagious. But as a hair and scalp practitioner, there is a way that you can, um, help the, the hair in other ways if they do have these contagious symptoms. Um, so here we have um, impetigo, a picture of impetigo, what that looks like. So you can see it's quite crusted. Sometimes it almost gets like a black crust as well. Um, here we have scabies, which are little eight-legged mites as well. This is contagious. Um, they burrow in the skin. And you can see it's very uncomfortable on the skin. Here we have a picture of head lice. Um, very common, like in children. It does happen in adults. I think everyone here has has a head lice story. I've had them when I was little. Um, I, I remember when I had them, I actually vomited at the thought. The first time I found out about these things crawling on me, I actually vomited. Um, I was about six years old. Um, but head lice spread very, very quickly. They um, they grow very quickly. They lay eggs. They hatch quickly. But they've got about an 18 to 20 day life span. But the reason why they stay is because they keep reproducing um, and um, and making laying eggs. Um, there, some of the treatments for head lice can be very harmful to the scalp. We've got more stories that we share in the hair and scalp practitioner on head lice. Um, so I like to work more naturally and actually using the beautifying serum on head lice is very, very, um, very good to use because one, it's natural. And what it is with head lice, they've got two little holes that they breathe through. And when you put beautifying serum on it, it, it basically stops them from breathing. So they, they die. But the only problem is you need to make sure you're removing all the eggs out the hair because they don't kill the eggs. So you, you need to be doing it daily with the beautifying serum, going through the comb um, and removing all that out. And it's very important in the salon when you're doing consultations to check for things like this um, because you don't want to get halfway through a haircut and realise that they have head lice. Um, and in the hair and scalp practitioner, you might want to treat it in the salon in a certain way, have a certain evening that you do that, but you know, making sure it's hygienic, it's safe, etc. Okay, we're nearly there, guys. Thanks for hanging in there and bearing with me. So here are some of our success stories. This is why we know the products work, the regimes that we do. This uh, is some evidence of real life clients. Um, and so you can see a before and after you for a thickening system here. Um, and sometimes with hair loss, we, we're told um, in trichology that the hair can't grow back once 
it, it the follicle was gone but with euphoria you can see it does really work and when you you go in with the right regimen the right regime it can make a difference so here is a gent here on this slide uh, we've got one client who suffered with um, I think this was sebderm and you can see this is before the treatment and then the after it got rid of all the dry scalp the flakes um, it, uh, it helped the hair you can see the shine on the hair after um, so you get immediate results and it's going to relieve the itching the uncomfortableness the other picture there is someone who is experiencing hair loss um, so you can see the very top picture it's very sparse very fine a lot of miniaturization happening there and then um, the bottom right or left two pictures you can see after going into the hero products there uh, the difference on the hair growth and how sparse his hair is there um, let me go on to the next slide here um, again this was sebderm um, and you can see in the first picture if you look closely all the dry scalp that she had um, and the flakes off in the hair and um, the, the second um, picture you can see all the flakes are gone the hair's shinier the scalp looks a lot healthier uh, and i'm just seeing here um elaine was that your gent that guy brilliant how is he doing now is it still um a lot filler fuller thicker is he still sticking to the regime great okay so just some added tips beauty starts within um so whatever the problem whatever is going on with your client, whether it's damaged hair, whether it's hair loss, dry scalp, whatever we put in our body, you are what you eat. Um, and so it's important that we look after our body and we look at this a lot more in the hair and scalp practitioner about uh, what vitamins, what food is good to have. Um, but you can do your own research if you want to as well, but beauty does start within and if they want good hair on the outside, they need to start from within taking certain supplements to help as well. Sleep is very, very important. Eight hours sleep a night is what's recommended because that's how long your body needs to renew its cells, et cetera. Water, actually I need a sip of water now we're saying it. Mm. We have to water our plants to keep them alive, to put it in the soil, to help them grow, to help them nourish. Um, we, we need to make sure we water ourselves. We stay hydrated. Drinking plenty of water is super important. Relax and breathing techniques because stressful times at the moment in particular, we need to make sure we're, we're relaxing and meditating. I'm a big fan of meditation. Um, and Debbie introduced us the other week, or it might have been last year, I was re-watching her um, webinars from last year of the 478 uh, breathing technique where you breathe in for four seconds, you hold it for seven seconds, and you breathe out for eight seconds. And we had time, I'd, we'd have us all doing it now. But if you try that, it's so good at just letting go and relaxing and uh, recuperating yourself. And of course, the products, writing down what products they need, you've got what you need in the salon, what they're using at home, the tools, the equipment, the way that they should be using it. Um, and the dry styling, what products they need to use the following week after they need to change it. Um, and just the, in, like, we do have the mood available on Salon Love as well. They need to create a more calm environment. Okay, so last slide, guys. So call to action for all of you. It's 60% what we do in the Salon, 40% what your client does at home. We must ensure they have the correct products and knowledge uh, to continue the regimes at home. If we were to take all the products out of the salon that we use, we wouldn't be able to achieve that result in the salon. How do we expect our clients to was, uh, achieve it at home? Um, ask them, are they open to our professional recommendation? They expect for us to give them advice. Um, like if you were to, if I was to go and have my lashes done and I was just to leave and my, my lash technician didn't tell me how to look after them and then they've come out within a week, I'm not going to be happy. I want her to tell me. We want this information. We want the solutions. That is how your client feels. They want you to tell them how to achieve and find the solutions for their hair or scalp concern. Ensure you're always refreshing your knowledge. 
uh, information changes regularly. We always have to go back and refresh. And this, that's why it's great for us to get together on things like today. Consistently deliver your eight steps in your salon every time, every client. Have an online campaign plan. I know you, um, Passion for Hair, have some great uh, webinars talking about campaign plans. Start it now. You can do this now for your clients. They need your help. They want. They they need solutions for their hair. Um, and if you if you've enjoyed today and you want to develop it a little bit further, then consider doing our hair and scalp practitioner course, where we dig deeper into the courses and look for more specialized treatments and services. We look at nutrition and equip you with all of the tools to have the services in your salon. Um, yeah. So we made it. What's the time? One o'clock, just in time for lunch for you all. But thank you all. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, contact me. Oh, no, actually, no, we've got questions. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Hold your horses. Um, uh, what is trichosiderin, please? Oh, so this is a, a, a color. I think we're going back to when we're talking about the different hair types and colors. Um, the EU melon, BU melon, and trichosiderin, I think, um, is what we're referring to. So it's just a hair. The, the different colors that we have in the hair um, and the, the melanin, is it? Um, I, I can't think now, it's not on that, but on the different melanin on the hair. But I hope that answers your question. Rebecca, have you the name of uh, the textbook you reference? Oh, right. So I don't know if you guys can see, but I've got a whole pile over here of all of my books that I use. Um, I've got my trichology book here. I've got my anatomy books here um but my favorite book out of them all and i'm sure you can get this from passion for hair and it is here somewhere um let me have a look it's under here right no i'm going to send a picture of it in the group but it's um from brian plunkett his hair and scalp science so it's only a little book I, i've literally memorized it off by heart this whole book and um, it is amazing specifically for hair and scalp concerns for hair stylists. It's absolutely brilliant. I think you can get that from Passion for Hair as well. Okay. What if you have curly hair? Um, so are we talking about, this is Carol. Um, so if you have curly hair, I think maybe we might have answered your question that you still treat the scalp differently to how you would treat your hair. It's just using the same, uh, using different products in different areas on your scalp and your hair hopefully that answers you carol how can we become a hair and scalp practitioner hopefully because we were meant to have um some of these courses over the past year available through passion for hair um, but as soon as we can come back together then we will be able to do it um i'm not sure if it's something we can do over a webinar um maybe in the future maybe but it's great for us to all meet up and um do the training together but it's all through passion for hair um and uh, you get everything you need the equipment the tools all the knowledge as well to set you up um so a miracle repair after yeah whenever you're doing a crystal gel always going in with miracle repair after um because it's just restoring everything uh because uh, Crystal gel removes all the minerals, all the impurities, really cleanses the hair, and it gives us the opportunity to put the proteins back into the hair. We make, need to make sure we put it back in. Um, yeah, we've got a few people on here, sorry, just jumping back with the Hair and Scout Practitioner course that have done it. And um, we've got our own Facebook page, and we still communicate in there. Um, and it is a great course. Um, and it's something, you know, all hairdressers come across. We, we work more closer to our clients, hair and scalp, and know more about the hair and scalp than what the doctor would in cases. Um, does it reduce the strength of the peroxide like others do? Oh, okay. So I think we're talking about the color elixir. This is from Julie and the mixable plus and no, it doesn't do that. The elixir. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, no, it doesn't reduce, um, you don't have to change the peroxide. Um, and I know with other brands, that was, a, um, I don't know if this is the right word, Debbie would be the best one to ask, but there's le le localities, legalities around where you, you're adding things and you need to change the strength of the peroxide. Um, but yeah, no, with, uh, with Euphora and Census, you do not need to ch change the uh, strength of the peroxide and you get amazing results, may I add. Um, 
Can these be used if extensions are in? Um, Julie, again, uh, what were we talking about? Uh, all the products can be used with extensions in. Um, I fully recommend Scalp. Like if you've got a client, oh, wait, there, do we go back? You bought a Scalp. Uh, yeah, 100%. I recommend that they have it. If you've got a client that's having hair extensions, they should have this product and they should be applying it twice a day. Um, I would make that part of my, if you want extensions, you need to have this. Are these all vegans? We do have a, um, all vegan. We do have a list of which ones are all vegan and which ones are not. We have loads of products, but the majority of them are vegan. The only reason that they wouldn't be vegan is because they may, uh, may have honey in it. Um, um, and that would be the only reason it wouldn't be vegan, but the majority of them are. And these lists um, can be found, I'm sure, on the People H Pro site. If not, they will be found on there at some point um, in the near future. Um, and is, oh, uh, uh, oh, wait, wait there. Will the presentation slides be posted or um, emailed at all? You've got any uh, presentation slides that you want to see? We can upload them on the People H Pro. Um, yeah, we can organize that, whatever you want to know. So is this good for psoriasis too? 100%, the scalp treatment, amazing for psoriasis. Better than what I've seen medicated shampoos do. Um, it's a lot better and it's a lot better for your scalp, it's a lot better for your skin um, and your, the health of yourself. Um, shampoo for excessive oily hair, please. Um, so I would say maybe the scalp wellness or the aloe therapy range, making sure we're using scalp treatments as well. Um, the scalp wellness sachets, just to help regulate the scalp. Okay. Um, male client has had successful hair implant just before Christmas. Is Hero product safe to use and vegan as he is vegan? Thank you. Love that. And actually really good point, Julie. Um, some clients, when they change their diet, will experience hair loss. If they go on a really like, uh, you know, keto diet, this or that, or they cut loads of things out, it can really make an impact on the hair. Um, and the Hero product, 100% for any form of hair loss and for a hair implant. I think I actually did a post this weekend of one of my clients who had, um, a, a an implant and, um, and the thing is with an, an implant, it's a great choice, but it's sometimes something that you need to keep doing as well, because if they have had hair loss, they start in the receding around the hairline. So they go and they have this um, transplant done. And what they do is they take hair follicles out the back of their head and they implant it in the front of their head. But and then the, with male pattern hair loss, it recedes further back. So they've treated there and now they've got a patch here. And actually I've, I've got a picture on People H that shows that. Um, but going in then with the Hero products can really help stimulate the scalp and prevent any hair loss. Any male clients, even if they're not having hair loss now, they should be using Hero as prevention. Okay. Will this be saved? Will this video be saved? Good question, Rebecca. I have no idea. Uh, let's ask Declan or Debbie about that. They will answer in the box there. And next one, next question. Um, I'm new to Malibu C, Sandra, and would like to stock them in the salon. What would you recommend? Um, so I love in the salon, uh, you've got your professional use of Malibu, uh, where you've got your crystal gel, um, your color pigment remover, your direct dye lifter. Um, and then the rehab, rehabilitate, rehydrate, illuminate products, they're all like your professional use. Um, but having the, um, the home care maintenance as well, they, they've got a whole selection there and they are amazing. The whole technology of Malibu, how it's, it's brand new. Like I really believe in the future, um, all hairstylists will be using products like Malibu in their salon. It's, it's um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's revolutionary. Um, and the way that it just works with the way the water is in the hair and how natural it is. And um, there's a Malibu starter kit on passion. Really good. Thanks, Maria. Brilliant. Um, Maria is the expert with Malibu C as well, by the way. She's done some fantastic webinars um, and she's very knowledgeable on, on it all. She's brilliant. 
Um, where is the list, please? I think um, Maria answered that. Oh, the, the vegan products. Yep. Yeah, so they are somewhere on the People H uh, Facebook page. I don't know if everybody is on that, but we do have a People H Facebook page. We've got People H People H Pro uh, website as well. Lots of information on there. Social media assets um, and also the Salon Love um, uh, app and website and also the census app there's so much information and with malibu as well they've got an, an app as well there's just so much information read, readily available for us um oh now i think is that is that oh, oh god is that my look like well thank you all and um any questions anything you want uh, you can get me on um the people hate uh, people hate stylist um or you know anything you want to know i can get it posted in there um and hopefully we'll be seeing some of you on the Hair and Scout Practitioner course. Thank you, everybody. Oh, is Hero alone good for certain scalp conditions for men? Um, would you choose a certain euphoria product, i.e. aloe therapy, from so Sophia? I thought we were going in, sorry. Um, is Hero alone good for certain scalp conditions? Uh, yeah, so I think you're asking just using the shampoo and conditioner. But all of the products, um, like, yeah, for men, Hero, 100%. It does everything that you, you would want from the other promises within Euphora. But it's just got more of a, a manly smell. Uh, the packaging's different. And even the styling products available in the Hero range all have the... Um, oh, yeah, there you are, Sophia. Um, they, they all have the same technology in it. Like, the styling products have the pro-amino peptide complex in it. Um, you know, the, the licorice it needs, to, which really helps the scalp and the hair as well. And all the ingredients in, are in the styling products. So the styling products are as well a treatment as well as a hair uh, styler at the same time. Thank you. Um, is this the end now? I don't, don't want to say it is in case another question comes up. Is that is that it, Deck? Are we done? I think... That is the end of all the questions. Right, well, thank you all. And, um, you know, use this time to keep developing yourself as much as you can um, and stay connected with us all. And let's go back bigger and better. Thank you all. Bye, everybody.